Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Now, historic films made in the spring of 1948 and just released show Enoetok preparing for heavily guarded and still largely secret tests of new atomic weapons. The test's purpose is to measure atomic effects on thousands of different materials, 30,000 tons of them, not, as at Bikini, to prove military effectiveness. San Francisco police say that nine persons have been arrested in a narcotics raid on the headquarters of the Grateful Dead, a widely popular singing group. Two members of the group, Rod McKernan and Robert Weir, and their business manager, Danny Rifkin, have been booked on suspicion of possessing narcotics. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Well, strange lights are causing a viral buzz on YouTube. Could we have caught extraterrestrial activity on a recent newscast? Brandon Arroyo investigates. As the newscast ended, the controversy began back on September 26th. What is that light shining in the back of the dark night sky? With coverage reaching all the way back to 1948, for over 70 years, Fate magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Now, Fate Magazine Radio is carrying on that tradition of setting the standard in Paranormal Talk Radio as we report and discuss some of the most mysterious and perplexing phenomena imaginable in this strange world of ours. Now, here is your host of Fate Magazine Radio, Kat Hobson. Hello there. Welcome to Fate Mag Radio here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I am Kat Hobson, your host. And, you know, every so often, you get another shot, right? We had so many technical issues, and I don't really know what was going on with that. But we're here now. And I am so excited. You know, I have... I have had a chance to do some some listening on some of the young men that we're going to talk about, or at least the programs that they've been involved in. And I, when I first did, I was like, really? Well, that seems a bit, you know, bizarre. And it is bizarre. <laughs> but it's wonderful, too, because I just love anything... That, that makes me go, hmm. So, I'm going to apologize if you hear um, a keyboard because I'm on a different computer. And I have to say thank you to everybody in chat. Y'all are so awesome. I love every one of y'all. Hour and a half late and y'all are there for us. So, before I introduce him or bring him on, let me tell you about Lynn Caston. He is a UFO researcher, UFOs and ETs. He is a freelance writer. He is a former member of um, 
the National Investigations Commu Committee on Aerial Phenomena, as well as MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. He is, he's really a gifted author, and the books are pretty intense. His work has been pretty intense. He wrote The Secret History of Extraterrestrials, The Secret Journey to the Planet Serpo, Alien World Order, which kind of, you know, set the world on its ear, and now Dark Fleet, The Secret Nazi Space Program, and The Battle for the Solar System. I cannot wait to have this conversation. Lynn, thank you so much for being here twice. <laughs> nice, nice to be with you, Ken. Very happy to be with you. Well, I have... I have been waiting for this, and I'm very, I'm very glad that the powers that be did not win the day. Because when, I don't know if I told you, when I was looking at the videos on your website, it was very difficult. I had a real struggle, the, um, and that was, I looked at the last one this afternoon, but it was really bizarre. You, you mean you weren't have getting a fantastic any, computer getting, that doesn't happen? You weren't much. getting you weren't you weren't getting any sound to, for the videos? Yeah, I had I, it was great. Okay, and, good. Yeah, you have to press you have to you have to click on that little thing in the lower right hand corner to get mm -hmm. the sound. So a lot of people missed that. I'm sorry about that. I'll have to put a note in there to make sure that people get that. Well, it's it was astounding, and I I had. As I said, I heard Corey Good speak a couple of years ago at a conference, and I had been, I was coming out of one lecture, and I saw his name, and I knew that I had him on, you know, one of my people to watch. So I went in, and I sat down, and my world was altered, yep, and I know that he that. catches flack sometimes I think he's pretty amazing and um, I just when I saw this book I was like oh yeah I really need to see this you know see these videos talk to this man and there you were yeah, yeah it's funny how some people react badly to, to Corey Good I don't even know why I think it's a lot of disinformation going around, but uh, there seems to be some some sort of a prejudice against him from some quarters. But uh, I think he's I think he's great. I think he's great. Well, I do too. And when I first came uh, when I first came back, I was not doing Fate Magazine Radio at that time. I was doing Paranormal Experienced, and I. He and I are connected on LinkedIn, and I had tried to get an interview with him, but I think he was not really sure who I was. I I would still love to interview him, but it happens when it's supposed to. Yeah. I, I am just really fascinated by your books, though. And I know that um, I have a list of questions. You had a little bit of guidance and I think that we're going to go with you. We're going to get some out of chat because my questioners are there. So <laughs> it's fun. You'll, you'll get some great questions from these folks. Oh, that's but, good. Okay. But I want to start with where you're comfortable starting, which is, you know, there's a fourth dimension. How many dimensions are there? Well, my according to my information, there are 11 dimensions, but I don't know. I don't have anything to check that against. I don't really know if it's true or not, but I, I've gotten that from several several different people. So uh, I think it's it's valid, probably valid, but I'm only, a, I'm only aware of, of four. That's all I deal with. Uh, I certainly can't rise above the fourth dimension in any way, shape, or form. Well, is, are these dimensions things that we can achieve access to through opening ourselves and meditation and channeling? I think it's a matter of your consciousness. 
it's, it's a question of how you can, whether or not you can raise your consciousness because it's all based on consciousness and we're all we're all being limited in our consciousness deliberately we're being held down by exterior forces so we can't we can't get it up into those dimensions but they're they're just they're just distracting us with nonsense and with entertainment keeping us dumb and dumber and that's the problem we've, we've all been dumbed down the entire human race and that's that's the situation well i certainly know that our education is much different than it was before we went federal and i know also that that's intentional because yes. they just needed people that could program machines and push buttons and that's what they were educating us toward with very few exactly. doing anything different so they keep us in they keep us in a state of ignorance basically and that's the situation uh we have to learn how to raise our consciousness deliberately each each person has to do it by meditation uh by reading the right material and listening to the right material especially classical music things like that that can raise your consciousness. And then once you start to raise your consciousness, I think you start to get into these higher dimensions very little, a little bit at a time. It's not easy. Well, nothing worth having is, right? That's right. Really. They want to keep us dumb. They have, a, they have a motive to keep us dumb and dumber, and they're doing it. What would that motive be? To control us, of course. They control us. They run the whole our whole society. We could have free energy tomorrow if they let us. If they let us, we could have anti gravity tomorrow. We could have. We could have uh, age regression. We could they have. We already have age regression, but we don't do. have it. Well, yeah, the, the super soldiers public. have it. The super soldiers have it. But we don't have it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. If that technology came on the market, people would flock to it. I mean, just look if we at could the... raise, if, if we as a race could raise our consciousness on a large scale, they could no longer control us at all. We would be far above it. We'd be, then, then we'd be free. We're not right now. Yeah. Well... We'll move to the secret so super soldiers here in a little bit, but I really want to stay with with this. Um, you say that the Nazis coordinated with reptilians, and yes. that the reptilians are able to impact the third dimension that we're in. Right. How do they do that? Well, and they, why they did they make a, a contract with, with them in the first place? What drew them to being willing to work with the Nazis? Well, they inhabit the fourth dimension. They're not comfortable. They're really not comfortable in the third dimension, but they can, they can come down to the third dimension when they need to. Uh, people know the fourth, when the people refer to the fourth dimension, Sometimes referred to as the lower astral realm. That's basically where they where they dwell. But uh, they, then, from that dimension, they can control our dreamscape, and they can control the astral realm. They can control our minds from that dimension, and that's what they do. And we are under their control. Make no mistake about it. But what would be, you know, they came and interacted with the Nazis. Had they been here prior to the world wars, or did they just go with the Nazis because similar personalities or goals or what was the, what was the connection there? They've been, they've been here before we were. The, uh, the reptilians inhabited this planet a uh, hundred thousand years ago. They inhabited the, the continent of Lemuria in the Pacific Ocean, before we even got here. But there were humans on Mars, and there were humans on a large planet in our solar system called Maldek, but there were no humans on Earth at that time, so they had it all to themselves. 
And that's when the Federation, the Human Federation, decided to send a, a fierce race to this to this planet to confront the reptilians. They weren't willing to let the reptilians have this planet. And so really, we're really in a, con- in a, in a conflict with them, and we have been for a long time. So for people who haven't read your books, the the human species has been around that long too. The human species is all over the galaxy. They're all over the galaxy. But here on Earth, uh, the reptilians were here first on this planet. Okay. Well, what um, what is the purpose of hiding that history. I mean, I know that the control thing is a big deal, but prior to them hooking up, why was it so imperative that that humans not know their history? Let's put it this way. They, they keep us on a, on a ranch the same way we used to keep cattle on a ranch. Mm Mm-hmm. And they use us for various purposes, but they control us completely through their human hybrids, the Illuminati, mm-hmm. who control the control the financial system, the the entertainment systems, the newspapers, uh, the video, everything. They control it, and they do not let us in on any of that. And oh, another that's thing just that. Another thing that should be known is that um, it should be understood that they do actually do physically eat human beings and they drink our blood. And that's why they keep us on this uh, in this ranch here, because uh, we're a resource to them. We're a resource and they're not concerned about us taking over because they've kept the science and technology to themselves. If they would release the science and technology that they know about, We'd be free of them in no time. Well, then they have no incentive. No incentive. And so what happened here was that uh, they've been dwelling underneath the surface for many, many years since Atlantis. The, The human race on Atlantis was not the same human race that we are. We're different. The human race on Atlantis was far superior to us. And they were... Definitely a challenge to the reptilians, and there, were, there, there was a lot of war between the, the reptilians and the humans at that time. But then they sank the continent of Atlantis, went down beneath the beneath the beneath the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, the, the human Atlantic race had to Ocean? Scatter. What's that? The Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantean civilization was on the continent of Atlantis, in the Atlantic Ocean. That's where the Atlanteans lived. Okay. Had a very high, had a very high civilization. They had, they had space travel. They had total control of physical problems. They had incredible science and technology. And the reptilians at that point launched a campaign to sink the continent of Atlantis, and they did. And the continent went down in one night. But before that happened. The humans scattered throughout the globe, uh, especially creating colonies all over the all over the globe, especially in Egypt. And the um, the, col- the colonization of Egypt uh, was clearly a very superior colonization uh, civilization, and that's because they were Atlanteans. Okay. the the original The original col- colonizers of Egypt were from Atlantis. Before it went down. That's why they had the technology. They had the technology. They had the architecture. They, they built huge statues. That, and there was, no prior, there was no prior primitive civilization in Egypt. There was nothing, nothing that pre- preceded the, the um, emergence of that tremendous, tremendous technology and learning that the, the Egyptians... Uh, exhibited. So that's that's more or less proof positive that they came from somewhere else. They did not grow up. They did not grow up in Africa. 
Okay, well, we're at our first break, and we have questions. So um, we're going to take this, and we will be right back. Okay, sounds good. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Come on, I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Son of a... Hey, son. Mother... (laughs) Uh, son, what are you doing? Hey, mom. I'm getting ready to listen to Periscope Uncensored. By expanding your vocabulary. Well, it is uncensored. Son, the uncensored part of Periscope Uncensored is Jax and I getting down to brass tacks with all aspects of the paranormal. There's no fluff on our show. So, no off-color commentary? (laughs) I didn't say that. Awesome! Son? Uh, I just hit my head. Oh boy, I'll go get you an ice pack. Catch Periscope Uncensored Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fake Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown. All of them true. Fake Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange and bizarre join host cat hops sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m eastern on wbhm digital broadcast you are listening to wbhm digital broadcasting birmingham alabama Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Fate Mag Radio here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. I am so excited to be having this conversation. Y'all just don't know. Um, I am going to bring some questions up out of our chat room and then we're going to just keep on going. And... Sherry, um, she has two, one of which we were talking about as far as the encounters within the dimensions, and you have not, you have not had those that you're aware of, right? Myself? No, I have not. Right. Okay. And then the next question is, okay, what the heck? They eat us and drink our blood? We're going to need a better explanation, <laughs> So, <laughs> which is a well, freaky I've... thing. Well, these all of these myths about vampires are very close to the truth, but not quite there yet. Interesting. Yes. Yes, say now before we discuss that, the reptilians when they arrived at this planet, they did bring their own food source with them. And that food source was the dinosaurs. Okay. Okay. And uh, they ate the dinosaurs. Yes, that was their food source, the same way we eat cattle. However, uh, after they after they had to go underground, and after the Atlans, the Atl- Atlans founded Atlantis and started killing dinosaurs, they decided they were going to start eating us instead. Instead, 
and use us as a food source since we killed all the dinosaurs, since the Atlanteans killed all the dinosaurs. That's interesting. So, so it wasn't like a meteor strike that created the longest winter and things died off? I'm sorry, say that again, please. So what took out the dinosaurs were our ancestors, not a meteor strike. The dinosaurs were not were not our ancestors, no, they were no, not. No, I mean, but what killed them was the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans started slaying the dinosaurs as soon as they arrived here. For one thing, the Atlanteans had an agricultural economy, and the dinosaurs were tramping all over the, the crops, okay? But it was also because the Atlanteans were sent here directly to confront the reptilians because the Federation was not willing to let the let the um, to let the to, to, to let the reptilians have this solar system, and the, the goal was to try and confront them here on this planet to keep them from taking over the Earth. Wow. So there's a whole long history that. As a species, humans in general know nothing about. Absolutely. The human race that you and I know uh, is posted is, is what's called the Adamic race. We're only about 40,000 years old. The Atlanteans yes. go way, the Atlanteans went way back beyond that when they got here. By the time the Atlanteans got here, they had been in the solar system and in this galaxy from, for hundreds of thousands of years. They were a totally different species than we are. We have, unfortunately, we have the reptilian brain, and we have to live with it. Well, they did not have, the Atlanteans did not have the reptilian brain. Spiritually speaking, they were much more advanced than we are. Well, that just doesn't seem fair. It doesn't, but there are many degrees of humans in this galaxy. There are many, many human civilizations in this galaxy, and they do differ uh, somewhat, but they're all basically human, and they have the human uh, spiritual uh, connections with the higher dimensions. We do have a we do have a connection with the higher dimensions, and uh, that explains our spirituality. The reptilians have no spirituality at all. They don't, they don't have no heart chakra. They have no compassion. They have no love. They don't even know what love is. They just know how to conquer and dominate. That's all they really know. But they're well, very, 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 very good on technology. I know humans like that. Yeah, right. There are so, some. I no know. compassion, no heart, and great at tech. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, there are some of those around. But as a whole, the human race, the human race has a spiritual dimension that the reptilians cannot even approach. We're tied to a very high spiritual dimension, and if we could, if we could get free of their control, we could, we could really blossom. Well, it it just sounds like it would almost be an impossibility, though, because we would be, we're so suppressed. No, it's not an impossibility. All, the, all that we have to do is raise our consciousness. That's all we have to do. If we could raise our consciousness as a race, be, they would go away. They, could no longer, they would no longer be able to handle us at all because we would be much superior to them. And actually, they are afraid of us. And that's why they keep us down. That's why they control us. Well, that's um, encouraging. Because yes. a lot of people are, it seems they're almost genetic. Maybe there is a little bit of our ancestors in us. Because I know several people that spring to mind off the bat that um, feel that they are warriors, as it were. It's, um, right. it's a spiritual kind of experience for them. And they're able to manifest unwittingly often um, that strength when there comes a situation that needs a champion and they're able yes. to step into that uh -huh. so 
Our, well, our, our most, our strongest asset, our major asset, our strongest asset is our ability to love. The reptilians don't even know what love is. They have no concept of love at all. That's our strongest asset. And once we've developed our spirituality uh, high enough, they won't be. They will not be able to uh, control us any longer. Well, you know what? I I know a lot of people that are trying very hard to raise themselves. And you're right; it is difficult. Okay. They keep us. Um, they keep us. They keep us controlled with money. With technology, which is very superior in technology, they keep us under complete control. And they control the press, they control the financial world, they control our physical bodies. That's why our lives are so short. We should be living up until six or seven hundred years of age. If we, if once we reach that point of, 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 tech, of, uh, of our uh, consciousness raising to that degree, we will live very long lives, very long lives. Just like in the Bible. Would we be able to eradicate the diseases that we've developed as a species? Yes, absolutely. The different... ab- absolutely. That will be the first order of business. No more vaccines, none of that. The human body is, is a very, very uh, carefully designed uh, uh, machine, really. And its poten- potential is unlimited, virtually unlimited. Well... I think that that's how, well, I know that's how we started out. So, or we wouldn't have been having Methuselah and Abraham and everyone else living for decades. Okay. Right. Noah, Noah, Noah himself lived to uh, eight or 900 years, you know? So, mm-hmm. and we have many, many other examples in the Bible of uh, long, long-lived humans. Well, yes. So, that, that's right. Okay. So we know it's possible. We know it's possible. Okay, the chat room is confused. So I'm going to ask these questions. I think that your answers will give clarity because we need to get the clarity in order for them to keep up with the advancement of the topic. So um, I'm going to just ask all of them and just let you flow with that you know you can just fill that in so the first one was where um the understanding that they got was that the reptilians do not still eat us okay then it says do you do you think cavemen communicated with aliens way back what's your opinion on the whole alien thing and then can you name can you name the four dimensions that you're aware of because they're a little confused and the last is so aliens are trying to control us still i'm seriously amazed i don't get this so aliens you know reptilians are in control correct yes they they are in control Okay, so um, are you okay with with just kind of handling that flow as we go through there? Because... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, say that again. Well, like with the the cavemen communicating with aliens way back and your opinion on the whole alien, alien thing, well, there are tons of species. What, 36 species of aliens? Of Including us? Is it something of that nature? I'm sorry, 36 species? I, is that what you're saying? Well, she is, um, she's confused um, on where you are with aliens. So aliens do communicate. They're here. There are bases. And we we're going to move into that next. The dimensions are really various levels of consciousness like if you are at a higher vibration then you're achieving a higher dimension it's very difficult it takes work to advance that 
um, their light levels of consciousness. And as far as cavemen communicating with aliens way back, cavemen were snacks, right? You're talking about Neanderthal? What are we yes. talking about here? Yes. I have no, I have no knowledge of the of the spiritual dimensions of ne- of Neanderthals. I do know this: <clears throat> when the human race was created about fifty thousand years ago on this planet, the so-called Adam and Eve story, um, they were created at a very high level already. And as far as I know, uh, we were beyond Neanderthal, even at that point, way beyond Neanderthal, even at that point. But since that first creation about 50,000 years ago, the aliens who created us, our DNA, have made 22 adjustments over the years to the human race until we are now, they now consider us, we're now called Homo sapiens sapiens. Mm-hmm. We're no longer just, we're no longer just simple Homo sapiens. I mean, I don't think that the Neanderthals could drive a car or work a computer, frankly. Right. So, uh, you know, we've come a long way. We've come a long way, and that's because of our friends in the galaxy who have helped us. And Corey Good talks about that. Mm-hmm. He says that on, in his videos that they have made 22 adjustments to our DNA over the over these thousands of years to the point that we're at today. And, you know, we still have a lot more in front of us. There is just so much to know. That's why you've researched this for 30 plus years. <laughs> well, yeah, I just went, I just went where it took me, you know. I just tried to get to the bottom of this because once I realized that the reptilians made a deal with Hitler, and we know that now for sure, that uh, Hitler's, Hitler's confidence that he could take over the world was based on his connection with the reptilians. Uh, so uh, that's how that started. Well, and you know, for the chat and for anyone else listening, this sounds bizarre if this is your first time hearing it. The first time I heard it, I was, I was gobsmacked, okay? So it's okay if you're sitting there going, oh my word, this can't possibly be, you know, factual. There's no way this could be happening. Well, there is. And depending on the research that you do um, and the reading that you do, I had I had somebody who was a host on another show on a network that I was on when I first started out who was terrified. And her boyfriend had written a book and they were constantly going to be you know, killed by the Illuminati when he tried to take it to the Library of Congress to register it and reptilians ate everybody and they got off on it because if they like to hunt because if they were going to eat you, the adrenaline released by your fear made you tastier. And that's, that's what they say. Yes, that's correct. Yes. That's why they like that's why they like to eat little children. So, because the children don't react that way. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot to this that sounds like it is absolutely impossible. Like, you know, you would have to be crazy to believe it. And I was one of those people that thought that at one time. I do not so much anymore based on research and reading that I have done. And, um, you know, it's it's okay if this is your first time hearing it. Just don't don't be down on yourself if you're trying to grasp it, because this is pretty intense stuff. And you know, Lynn has done thirty years worth of research on this, and there's people in the community that still have a problem with it. So don't be harsh to yourself. It's a good thing to just listen. And, you know, like I said, when when the host of the other show was telling me this stuff, 
I just tuned her out because I was like, oh, this is insane. You are such a nut. Well, I'm hearing from a lot of other people that this is a side of life and this is something that happens. I, I know that Lynn has researched this. I know that he's not insane. And I know that there are other people who have done this work too, who, who have reached the same conclusions. So he's not standing out there in a field alone, screaming at the people to listen. Although I bet sometimes you feel like that, don't you, Lynn? I do. But uh, David Icke broke down the barriers. And uh, after that, things started to happen. He was definitely, he was definitely uh, the, the first one to, to break down those barriers. And yes. uh, you know, he opened the doors. He opened the doors. And thank God for that. Well, I, can't, I couldn't imagine with this being true, that it would be a good thing to, to hide, you know, to hide your head. I just, I don't see that as something that anybody would want to do, but I hope not. I hope not. You know, so, um, the next question is missing people in this country. Well, they're all over the world, but missing people specifically, you know, they're going to have missing people. And I would, I would, re- I would recommend the book "Missing 411." Yes, I, would, I think everyone should read that book. David Polites. about children. David Polites, absolutely. Uh, he he broke the ground on that one, and well, uh, did the research and, and came up with the answers. And it's astounding. So we were talking about reptilian bases on earth where are they underground they have a complete civilization under the surface don't forget the uh, the crust of the earth is like a honeycomb and goes down goes back at least 200 miles down and they're very good at that they've done that on many other planets and many other solar systems they know exactly how to do that they created an entire civilization underground with high-speed trains, uh, maglev trains, and they have portals that go in and out. They can leave the, they can leave the planet in, uh, through the portals and fly out into the galaxy anytime they want. So they're not concerned with being underground. In fact, they really have no need for a, for a, uh, a continent on the surface. They don't need it. They control us completely from underground. Well, I think that I'm probably... Well, I'm going to ask you when we get back from this next break, but we've got a couple of minutes. Talk amongst yourselves. We'll be back. And thank you all for being here. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Come on, I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHN Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Listening to WB 
AHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. You have another question or you want to wait? Welcome back to Fate Mag Radio here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. And we are having such a great time. I am I'm so fortunate to be joined by Lynn Caston because I have had questions for him for eons, basically. Not truly, but feels like it. And we have that same reaction, Lynn, in our chat room. That's so good. when um I'm going to go ahead and, because you actually stated this when we started the show, but I think it hadn't, it hadn't really hit yet. Why hasn't anyone been able to take pictures of them? They actually have. And when you say they control us, what exactly do you mean by that? You want me to answer that now or wait? Well, I think now would be okay or whatever you feel you would like to do well they have we have uh, rep, we have we have uh, hybrid hybrid entities that are part human and part reptilian that run this planet they they're called the illuminati they control the money they control the the access to the uh, to the to the press and to health to everything to our medical system they control all of that and so they have it all under control through the Illuminati. They control the secret societies. Uh, and they, they decide who can learn what. They control the universities. They control our educational system. All of it to keep us in, down in a state of ignorance. And we are in a state of ignorance. Well, that's why this information is so new to the majority of people when they first hear it. Because it is very well contained. But, um, you know, we were talking about the bases and such, and you were talking about Antarctica. And I really found that interesting because I know that on, um, on voting day for Obama's final present, you know, final election, that John Kerry was actually in Ontario in Antarctica that day because he was on a ice cutter. There's a nice video of him and a you know nice button down. And at that point, within a very short time frame, a representative, a high level representative from every government, including the Greek Orthodox Church, had gone to Antarctica. And right, that's right. I remember, I remember that. Yep. And, you know, a friend of mine who was very into that and retired FBI and, you know, all kinds of tools and toys had put, you know, web, you know, web crawlers out and said that the, um, when you put the words together, that the primary phrase that was coming out of there was um you know um oh come on brain atlantis that they had found atlanteans and i was just kind of like under antarctica so i that took me aback but um you know i think that that whole time period, it was almost like a, um, like the world order was coming together to get instruction or something. They weren't all there at the same time. Like Prince Harry was who went for England, right? And yes. Putin went. Um, Kerry was our representative. And were they getting instructed? I mean, is there any way to know what that was relevant to? Well, we know that basically the American military is controlled by the reptilians. 
that's the reason that uh, they're not giving us any science and technology that we need. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me that the uh, the military is keeping it all under tight control. And you have to have a you have to have a reason you have to have a very good reason to be taken down there. And Corey Good was taken down there. He saw what was under the ice. Uh, they have huge caverns under the ice with, t- with tall skyscraper buildings. And uh, and also they have uh, dead pe- dead members of previous uh, human civilizations on this planet that go way back. They found bodies that do not resemble us at all. They resemble King... Uh, uh, they resemble Nefertiti and uh, the early Egyptian pharaohs rather than us. So where did they come from? So, you know, they're keeping it under tight control, and, and uh, un- it's understandable that they would want to do that. They don't want us to know all that. They don't want American newspapers and magazines to get a hold of that information. Well, nobody would believe it anyway. That's right. That's right. But see, what, so what's happened is not this. To. That's right. So what's happened is this. Instead of giving us the information as science and technology, they give it to us as fiction. And our people produce science fiction. What we call science fiction is really truth. And people like, um, people like uh, George Lucas... And Roddenberry, they knew what was going on and what they called the Star Trek and Star Wars is the truth. Yeah. There's more truth in science fiction than there is in science. Because that's the only outlet we have. Right. I mean, it really is the only avenue to get any kind of information out. Exactly. Exactly. And that's and it's being used by people like Roddenberry and Lucas. Who knew, who knew and were and were in on the truth. They were they were briefed on all of this stuff. Star Trek is true. Even now, a lot of the things that we, that seem so so incredible on the early Star Trek episodes are now are now more or less uh, uh, science. Our oh, cell please. phones, iPads, instance. flip phones. We're working. We actually have achieved teleportation of. Um, Exactly. Exactly. We do have teleportation. Yes. Andy, have you talked to Andy, have you talked to Andy Massaggio? I have not, but um, I was in Pasadena a couple of years ago as well, and I heard Trent Taylor and a bunch of other people talking. And you know, Trent is a pul- propulsion. Travis. Travis Taylor. I'm sorry, but Travis is a propulsion engineer. But he also has multiple PhDs and masters, and he is brilliant in all of those fields. And he was sharing that, um, you know, if if they're sharing it with you, this is like twenty year old information, right? But talking about the fact that they had achieved um, teleportation with you know single cell organisms, and they were moving up, you know. In, in the complexity of the species that they were trying that with and being successful. So The uh, tele- teleportation was shown in Star Wars. Uh, it was shown to some degree in Star Trek. That, don't forget that those, those shows came, Star Trek came on the air in 1966. Mm-hmm. That, was 50, that was 54 years ago. And We've already gone past everything on Star Trek. Yep. Quantum, we have quantum technology. We have quantum computers. We have quantum healing. I mean, you name it, we have it. But it's mainly being kept under control by the Nazis on Mars and on the moon. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to write this book, was to make bring that out. Well, you know, when it comes to the quantum healing, I have a question, which is if... The reptilians are here. Who are the um, supportive entities who come and craft and who interact with with humans? 
Well, you know, we do have friends in the galaxy that are trying to help us, but they can't do it for us. And these are these are the friends in the Federation that basically uh, helped out with our 22 upgrades. Uh, and Corey Good discusses that in detail. But they cannot do it for us. They want us to, to grow into it ourselves and to take over ourselves. And once we do that, then the reptilians will have to leave this planet. They won't be able to control us any longer. Well, something that's concerning to me with with that aspect is that given like today's environment, okay, there is there is so much animosity there's anarchy. We are seeing the worst of humanity with the best of humanity. And there's not, there's a lot of angst and anger, which I would think would be by design. You know, you know we I already can't, have a I question in chat relevant I, I to the coronavirus. And, you know, it's just, Do, do we not weaken ourselves with that kind of emotion? Or does it cleanse us by being so strong that it burns through stuff? What kind of emotion are you talking about? The extreme intensity of emotion that people are feeling right now with the, the fear and the anger and the bitter. Because that seems to be ruling large numbers of people right now. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing people coming together now and helping each other more than they have in a long time. I mean, think about, think about the human race and during World War II. Think about the horrors of World War II. Think yes, about the ho- horrors of those concentration camps. I mean, I mean, we've come together a long way, actually, despite the reptilians, which shows, which shows you the potential power of the human race. Yes. The human race... And, and the human love can conquer everything. And but I'm know not that. seeing that right now. Well, you, you're seeing more of it than you, we used to see. I mean, if we go back to the 40s and World War II, the horrors of World War II, can you imagine anything more horrible than that? The torture and the horror and the, and the executions and, and the control of, of the populace that occurred during the 40s in Germany and in uh in Japan? Germany and Japan were hideous, yes. So we've come a long way from those days. Feels like and, we're descending um, right now. Exactly. We are it's growing. Supposed to come we are together. Growing. Yes. Despite the fact that they control our universities and our educational systems, we're still we're still getting better. We're getting better. We're becoming more loving and more concerned about the human race than we were before. I think. I think there's a large contingent of that, but I think that I know that love is quietly stronger. Love and positivity are quietly stronger. But the virulence of the anger and negativity spewing is just so hard. It's so hard to hear the quiet voices that are saying we've got this. No, know? no. When you talk about the when you talk about the anger, are you talking about the racial problem? Well, it's not just the racial problems. It's people who are terrified over this virus that just keeps, you know, the gift that keeps on giving, and it's people who have lost their minds because they can't even have a civil discussion if you talk about like our president or members of Congress, I mean, and that's not single-sided from any direction. It just seems to be overwhelming. And well, it's really to hard to you feel... Have to understand that, you have to understand that the, the, the Illuminati control the media. Right. Okay, they, they control what we see on television. They control what we read in the papers. They control what our, what our, um, our diplomats and our senators and our congressmen all subscribe to 
Exactly. They're being, they're being controlled at every level. So we can rise above that. We can rise above that. We I'm all that about power. doing that. And every time, well, we have to go to break, but I'll tell you um, something that I've seen and we'll be right back. So everyone, this is a great time to go and get a beverage, throw some cartwheels, do whatever you need. Loosen that back up. And, you know, I am thrilled you're here. I'm thrilled Lynn is here and we'll be right back. Support for NPR and the following message come from DuckDuckGo, the internet privacy company committed to raising the standard of trust online. With one download, you can search and browse privately, avoiding trackers. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Windsor Johnston. The World Health Organization is reporting a record increase in global coronavirus cases. NPR's Jeff Brumfield reports infections continue to rise in the United States, India, Brazil, and South Africa. More than 230,000 new cases were reported in a 24-hour period, according to the WHO. That is the largest number of new cases since the outbreak began and a sign the virus remains far from under control. The U.S. made up a big portion of that case total with more than 66,000 new cases. Brazil also reported a staggering 45,000 new cases. To date, the WHO reports more than 12 million people have been sickened globally by the coronavirus and roughly half a million have died. Jeff Brumfield, NPR News, Washington. Florida shattered the national record today for the largest single-day increase in positive coronavirus cases. Public health officials have confirmed more than 15,000 new infections. The Trump administration is continuing to pressure states to fully reopen schools this fall. NPR's Amy Held reports many teachers are expressing concerns about resuming in-person instruction amid a spike in new coronavirus cases. One quarter of all teachers are at a higher risk of becoming seriously sick from COVID-19, according to a Kaiser Family Foundation report. But Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos told CNN the stance of the federal government remains clear. Kids need to be back in school. What's not clear, experts say, is a blueprint for a safe reopening or funding for protective measures. There is nothing in the data that would suggest that kids being back in school is uh, is dangerous to them. The data show children are, by and large, spared the worst of COVID-19, but they're not immune. And much remains unknown about how they spread the virus. Many districts are planning to continue to rely, at least in part, on virtual learning. Amy Held, NPR News. The U.S. Navy says at least 17 sailors and four civilians were injured after an explosion on a ship at a naval base in San Diego. Matt Hoffman from member station KPBS reports. A Navy spokesperson says the fire started just after 8.30 Sunday morning while 160 sailors were on the ship. Thick plumes of smoke from USS Bonham Richard poured into clear skies and covered parts of Naval Base San Diego and San Diego Bay. The amphibious assault ship was undergoing maintenance and therefore did not have any aircraft on board. Federal fire crews, local agencies, and other Navy ships responded to the scene. Some sailors and civilians were taken to the hospital and treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Navy Officials say the rest of the crew was evacuated from the ship and is accounted for. For NPR News, I'm Matt Hoffman in San Diego. This is NPR News. In Japan, the governor of Okinawa is pressuring a top U.S. military commander to implement tougher measures after several dozen Marines tested positive for the coronavirus. In a statement on Friday, U.S. officials said troops were taking additional protective measures to limit the spread of the virus and were restricting off-base activities. Okinawa is home to more than half of about 50,000 American troops based in Japan. Officials in Oklahoma say they'll resume an excavation of graves related to the Tulsa race massacre in 1921. Jessica Gallagher reports an earlier effort in March was suspended due to the coronavirus pandemic. In 1921, a white mob burned and looted Tulsa's historically black Greenwood district, killing hundreds of African Americans. A previous investigation suggested a large anomaly in an area of the city's Oaklawn Cemetery, consistent with mass graves. 
Travel restrictions earlier this year made it difficult for archaeologists to reach the cemetery. City officials say work will resume Monday and the test excavation is expected to take three to six days. Mayor G.T. Bynum hopes finding mass graves will bring justice and healing to the community. For NPR News, I'm Jessica Gallagher in Oklahoma City. Forecasters say high temperatures in parts of the southwest today could break records. The National Weather Service says Las Vegas, Phoenix and Tucson are expected to see temperatures of at least 110 degrees. Heat advisories are also in effect for many areas areas along the East Coast. This is NPR News in Washington. Welcome back to Fate Mag Radio here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. We are at the top of our second hour and I'm so glad you're here. I do want to let y'all know though that our new uh, edition of Fate Magazine is out and if you're listening on fatemag.com or through wbhm-db Either one, send us an email, send us an you know, information. If you have let your subscri- subscription lapse, then that's the place to renew it, fatemag.com. If you are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? I'm going to tell you that Phyllis does a great job with that magazine, and we have been in publication since 1948. And I am so thrilled to be part of this organization. I think it's absolutely a great thing. So check them out. And we are back with my guest, Lynn Caston, who is just a brilliant author. He's a UFO and ET researcher. He has written five books. The most recent one, which is Dark Fleet, the which is the Nazi secret space command and the battle to control our solar system. And Lynn, I wanted to ask you, because we haven't yet, when we say that this was the Nazi space command, well, and it was actually a Navy space command, I thought, but with our Air Force Space Command that we are building now, um, isn't that redundant? No, not at all. What Trump is calling the Space Force is nothing new at all. Nothing new at all. The Air, both the Navy and the Air Force have had long space programs for many, many years. And the, our base on Mars is also a naval, uh, it's basically a naval program. Uh, but our military is way ahead in terms of space travel. We have spacecraft now that are patrolling the galaxy. And Gary McKinnon, the guy that, that hacked the um, that's, that website, found out all about it and publicized that. And that's why the, that's why we want him. We want to arrest him in the United States, but he's not going to ever get here. We actually have spacecraft patrolling the galaxy. That's how that's how advanced we are. I'm not kidding. Well, you know, we we get fed these little tidbits, like with Hubble and the Viking craft and things of that nature, but you are talking about actual manned craft. That's correct. That's correct. Actual manned craft. And uh, our main source of that information is William Tompkins in his book, Selected by Extraterrestrials. Everybody should read that book. That guy is brilliant. He is brilliant, but make sure you get volume two. It's another book. That's the, that's the good one. The first one is great, but the second one, Volume 2, is even better. Selected by Extraterrestrial by William Tompkins. Well, I'm taking notes, and I've got a scratchy pen, so everybody probably heard me taking notes. That's okay. I usually get pages when I have these conversations. It's fantastic. But, um, you know, it's just really mind-blowing, and... We have all of these things. Where do they take off from? Because when Obama was president and defunded NASA, where did where did our craft go? And are they using the the portals and the hangar space and stuff in Antarctica? Or no, do they have... no, no, the ones in Antarctica are controlled by the Germans. Okay, the United States. The United States base is under the uh, Wasatch Mountains in Utah. 
That's where they build them. That's where they build the spacecraft. And they also build them on the submarines in New London, on the submarine uh, bases yes. in the London, London, Connecticut, where we used to, where we build aircraft carriers. Same technology, the same basic construction techniques, only they just changed some of the technology. That's all. Well, I just think that's astounding. In fact, when I was watching the the um, video, I was just like, "That looks just like a carrier." <laughs> you know, they you know, had which, the... which... Yes, that's right. You were watching the the first video, the main mm -hmm. video. That's right. Yes, and uh, Jeff, Jeff Rents discussed that in great detail with with Bill Tompkins that the uh, na the Navy used those those bases those construction facilities to build a spacecraft. But the main spacecraft construction facility is under the mountains in Utah. It's in a huge uh, facility under under a, a mountain in Wasatch, the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. There are about 30,000 people working there underground. Wow. How do they get them in and out? In and out? Do they not leave? <laughs> They just go up the elevator. That's all. <laughs> but that's a large, that's a large workforce to be trying to hide. Yes, it is, but they're successful at it. Well, they're successful they at a lot of stuff. That's right. They keep it under control. Don't worry about it. I just think it's fascinating because, you know, I go back to um, Independence Day which I love that movie. I just, it's one of those that if I see it on, I stop to see where it is and, you know, watch it from that point. But, you know, when, when Judd Hirsch goes into the, you know, the underground bunker and, you know, they're like saying, why didn't we know about this? Well, plausible deniability. And he yeah. says, you didn't really think they spend $20,000 for a hammer, did you? <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't, they're not movie. even subtle with hiding it. I know, but that was a good movie except for one thing. The way they portrayed the aliens as some, kind of, some sort of an octopus with many tentacles, that was unfortunate because the aliens look just like us, okay? And, uh, in fact, they're, they're taller and more stronger than we are. So to, to show them as, octo as an octopus was absolutely ridiculous. You remember that case, the place, the place where, Ed, where Will Smith yeah. uh, socked the, the alien? And it was some kind of a squishy being. Remember that? I do. That was deliberate misinformation. Deliberate. Well, you know, um, I really don't understand why they would choose to portray it that way. Because I don't either. Octopi are brilliant creatures. They can open jars they can they can do all kinds of things but <laughs> no if they, if they can open jars they can build an atomic bomb right that's right apparently <laughs> <laughs> okay if you say so i believe you <laughs> what else right but absolutely, it really absolutely. is ridiculous how these things are portrayed i absolutely. absolutely you know and there was a lot of there was a lot of truth in that movie though there was a lot of truth in that movie. Well, I liked the... I actually liked... I know it makes me sound like a bad guy, but I liked the weapon technology that they, they showed in that. And yeah. I liked the hive as well. Yep. Like the mothership. Because to mm -hmm. me, if you're going to be coming all that way, then... You're going to have to have enough people to make it worth your while if you're an invading force, right? So, exactly, and if you don't, and uh, if you don't believe that, just watch Star Trek. Oh, I hate the Borg. <laughs> I really do, and you know yeah. that is something that is visceral, right? I mean, that concept is very damaging. To my mind, which con to my piece which of concept, mind. Which concept? Which which concept are you talking about? The Borg. Oh, the Borg. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of bad. There are a lot of bad guys out in the galaxy. All right, no question about that. Yep. 
And it's just interesting to sit there and, you know, watch a movie. And, you know, even with the little bit of research that I've done. So, oh, we have a good question for you. Yeah. So, it's, um, okay, so aliens look just like us. Um, then how come all alien encounters are about the greys? The greys are not aliens. They're, they're, uh, they're little, they're little bellhops that the reptilians use to do the dirty work. That's all. They're part human, they're part biological and they're part AI. Uh, AI. Right. They're not really, they're not really biological creatures. Well, so I that's a whole been, different ballgame. I have been curious about that because when, um, when I heard, well, when I heard Travis Walton talk, for example, about his encounter, and granted, I think he was dead when they took him aboard and they couldn't leave a dead human, so they fixed him. But when he came to, or became aware, then um, he said they look like bugs. The creatures yeah. look like bugs. And when he flipped out and tried to take them all down, they left and came back as Nordics. People that looked like enough like him to make him feel better. Well, they, they don't. They, they do not shape shift to Nordics. They work with the Nordics. The Nordics work with them. You know that first uh, that first trip, that first uh, abduction by Barney and Betty Hill. Mm-hmm. You recall that there was a guy standing on the spacecraft dressed in a Nazi uniform. Do you remember that? I did not remember that. Well, Betty Hill discussed uh, dis- uh, discussed that. Yes. There was a guy there dressed in a Nazi uniform on the on the spacecraft. They work together. They work together. The Nazis are on the moon. They're on Mars. They have very sophisticated technology, and they control both. They control basically control the solar system from that point of view. So they were connected to that. Well, where did they come from, the reptilians? The reptilians were here before we were on this but planet. I mean, did they originate on Earth? No, they come from Draco. So it says from Draco and Orion. That's their main headquarters is in, is in Draco. Uh, but they're all over the galaxy, really. They have, they have very advanced space technology and teleportation, all of it. They're not giving it to us, but they have it. That's interesting. Well, with the the quantum stuff that we have now, um, and I'm sure that we're far behind on that as well, even though we do have some very brilliant researchers that are doing fantastic things with it, but the... The quantum healing that we had talked about earlier or mentioned, I have a friend who is able to draw somehow ETs. And when she was very ill and damaged, they fixed her. And... I found that to be so interesting because she has a relationship with the the people that she communicates with, and they and who are they? Who are those people? I don't know, but she says they're nothing but love and light. Nothing but what? I'm sorry, love and light. Okay, so. But they did. She had, she had been um, pretty physically hurt, and um, you know it was a chronic condition. So they just, she just, they fixed her. And now, who who was who was it that fixed her? The the aliens that she. She um, actually communicates and interacts with with some. And are they rep- are they reptilians or not? No, or they don't present as reptilians. Okay. All and right. which, you know, they're good. They don't have to, <laughs> you know, if they are. But, well, they could um, be Andromeda. They could be they could be from Andromeda. That's a whole different story. 
Well, I think the Andromedan. I think it would be Palladians because she identifies with the Palladians. Okay, very likely. It would be very yeah. likely the Palladians. Yeah, you know, it's it's very to me. It's very endearing that almost everybody that thinks that they are alien, you know, genetically aliens or hybrids, always choose Palladians. And the, the Pleiadians are basically our cousins. Cool beans. Well, we have to take our break. So we will be back. We do have some more questions. And um, you're going to be a busy guy. But okay. All right. <laughs> we'll be back right after this, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate every one of you. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHN Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Fate Mag Radio here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I'm so glad that you're here because this has been a great conversation. My entire chat room's minds are completely blown. And that's fun. I love when that happens. It just means that you're getting exposed to something that you'd never heard of before. And, you know, you can take it and run with it. You can drop it and run from it. It's all up to you, and it's about what you want to do with the information that we present. And that's great, because, you know, we have a choice. If it's frightening to you, just take small bites. It's okay. I am, I was shocked when I first started coming across this information, too. And it's, it took me a while. And the more I started reading, once I was aware of the topic, Okay, 
I wasn't even aware of the topic. But once you start looking around and comparing notes, comparing different researchers, the synchronicity in their work is is overwhelming. It's just really, really fun and interesting, even if your mind is freaking out. It's all good. All good. So we are back. We are with Lynn Caston. We are discussing the 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 well started with Dark Fleet and which is his new book, which is brilliant. I am just about done. It's got some of the best photos in it. You've got to check it out. And also, you know, everything is just right out there for you to look at. You can go to his website. You can Google him and find all kinds of information. Get his books on Amazon. And give yourself a shot at just absorbing some of the information. You'll love it. And Lynn, we were having a great conversation. And, you know, we have got people in chat who are just... Wait, he said there's life on moon on the moon and Mars, and it's like yes, you did say that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Can but unfortunately, get... it's unfortunately it's not American. We're working on that. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this: as you know, as you point out, those are reptilians who are there who are controlling us. And or controlling our environment and through our educational system and distractions controlling us. But um, what is what is their reaction going to be to us pushing out there? I mean, are they are we doing it because they're allowing it? They want us to be there for some reason. Or is this something that is happening in spite of? Well, they're still in control. We do have we do have very large spacecraft patrolling the galaxy. Yes, we do. Solar Warden uh, has huge spacecraft. Uh, however, the, the Nazis still control the Moon and Mars. The uh, the bases on the Moon are Nazi controlled. The bases on Mars are Nazi controlled. But they do give us landing rights there, and we do have a colony on Mars, and we do have a colony on the Moon. But they're still in control. What they what they do is they employ a lot of slaves. There's a lot of human slaves in the galaxy. And they have a lot of slaves on the moon and a lot of slaves on Mars. They, they, they abduct people from this planet and use them as slaves and some of the others. Well, that's astounding. Although I don't really know very, why people very, that are in power a, do that. There's a very large space a very large slave trade going on in this solar system. <clears throat> Corey Good talks about it in great detail. <clears throat> Corey Good's an interesting guy. He is a very interesting guy. Well, we've got another question, and I'm going to have to ask you if you would mind addressing this because we have another COVID question, which is, you know, is this an alien agenda or world order doing this? Well, I think they're trying to now to, to basically reduce the population. And sometimes they do it through war and sometimes they do it through disease. And right now it's disease. And they certainly are reducing the population. No question about that. With half a million people now dead, I believe. So all over the, all over the globe. They're very sophisticated. They have very sophisticated biotechnology. To create a to create a to create a virus like this is not difficult for them. They know how to do it. What all does I can that say mean? I'm sorry. That's all I can really say about it at this point. Okay. This is definitely this is definitely a created virus, as far as I'm concerned. This is not a naturally occurring virus. Well, this it was, is not this behaving this was created as in a laboratory. What's that? It does not have the characteristics of a natural virus. 
no, communication is too fast, too strong, too on point. Exactly. And, exactly. It's a bioweapon as far as I'm concerned. It is. I agree with that. I have thought that from the beginning and people just called me a conspiracy theorist. And I'm like, it's, it's only a theory if it's not true. You know, it's, you know, you have to test it and prove it. And then once that's done, it's no longer a theory. And I do think that's going to wind up happening if it has not already. And I noticed that there continue to be people who are um, apologists on this. You can't possibly, you can't possibly think that this was manufactured. And how can you not with the, with the way it's coming and going, it's flowing like the wind and you know, the way it mutates, the way yes. it mutates. Is it People airborne? Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. I mean, you know, the 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 sleight of hand has been so obvious. The answers have changed. The spin has changed from ostensibly well-educated, best-on-the-planet people on these topics. And, you know, you can't trust any of it because they changed like, you know, the wind you know it's just um, we've got a question in chat wondering if it's the same people behind the Georgia Guidestones relevant well you know as far as as far as the Georgia Guidestones are concerned uh, I believe that they 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 show a reduction in population to a half a billion is Mm -hmm. that correct Yes. That, it's not likely that we're going to get down to a half a billion with this virus. Although I think, I think we will get down to to millions. Millions will die, I believe, eventually. But it's already a half a million, is it not? Something like that. It has surpassed a half million. Now that's the number of cases. How many? What's the number of deaths so far? Um, I, I don't have that right at hand. I think it's three hundred thousand. I believe, something yes, like that. I know it's at least three hundred. So uh, this virus is not under is not we're not going to have a, a vaccine for this for a long time, and before it's over, I think there will be millions that will have died. And how many people died in World War II? About fifteen million, roughly. Yes. It wouldn't surprise me to see this approach that number. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, you know, I am just absolutely convinced you know it's um i don't think that i don't think it was created by other countries i think that it is a global plan and you know it just happened to initiate in wuhan and you know when you stop and you look back there are there are international entries all over this country. New York is not the be all and the end all. Right. No place else was tapped like New York. Well, I would like some. I'd like somebody to explain to me how this virus erupted all over the world at the same time, even in tiny countries mm-hmm. that don't even have airports. Yeah, and if the if the if the if the disease is coming in with travelers on on planes, how do they get it? And now they're saying now they're telling us that it is an airborne virus. It does it does get airborne, which means that if you're if you're concentrating on not giving it to somebody else, you're still vulnerable. Yes, and you better be wearing a you better be wearing a mask that can control what you breathe in and out, because if it's in the, if it's if it's airborne. You can step into a room and absorb the virus. Yeah, I think that's and what's you know, happening that's at all what, these, large, these large these large gatherings. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. You know, it's really um, it's really wild because when you sit there and you watch this, I have friends who are sheltering in their homes. I don't know. I mean, I mask when I go out in public. I would be a fool not to right now. But I 
you know, I was reading a thing yesterday that said you need to be masking in your own home. And I'm like, I'm not going to. You know, it's, I had a friend who is now a, a meme. In fact, he lived up north and he was being reported on my local channel. The meme that, where he said, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to buy into the hype. And then it had his obituary. And yep. significantly quickly, he he was exposed, quarantine, his test came back. He died three days later. Yeah, that's what's happening. And he was very public with his, you know, I'm not going to give in to the hype. You know, the fact that he became a meme so fast. He died on the 4th of July. <laughs> you know, we are a week and a day. And he's already all over the internet, global, basically, with that people were all over his Facebook and you know so insulting insulting to his friends I can't believe his parents were having to see these things and when I opened up my Facebook and saw it in my community I came undone I could not believe that that was the way we were treating people because it is against what he did was completely against all the conditioning that they have been so careful to put in place relevant to that virus. And so he was a threat. It's just insane. But um, I, guess you, I, guess you've, I guess you've heard about these COVID-19 parties, haven't you? Did you read about that? I have. That? In fact, I live in Alabama, and the University of Alabama down in Tuscaloosa was who initially, I think, made the news with that. Oh, were they the ones that did that? Okay. Yeah. And the guy that the guy that uh, that felt that uh, publicized it is now dead. Mm-hmm. The young man. Yep. So that didn't work out too well. Did not work the way he planned. But, you know, all these people, okay. you know, Spring Breakers came and Memorial Day people came. You can see the waves resulting from that. They started having the protests. And I'm sorry, they were not masked initially until there was such an uproar about them not being masked that they started wearing them. And look what happened. In, look what happened in Tulsa after the president's rally. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. There was somebody in Tulsa that said, um, like the day after that rally, they almost blew everyone's credibility because they said, and you know, since the president was here, their cases have doubled. I'm like, it's a two week incubation. That's right. It he is. did not bring it to you and you got it overnight. And it they popped up paper. about 10 days later, came up yeah. about 10 days later, I believe. Yep. But she was posting it like the next day and I was like, no, afraid not. But it was well, let's just... See, as, of, as, of, as of today, I believe about 10 senators, 10 Republican senators have already decided they're not going to go to the Republican convention yeah. because because they know that uh, they may not come back. Well, and, so. you know, that is absolutely the case. I I am just sitting here watching all this stuff because I was a political science major. I love politics, but oh. you know, I, I tend to try to stay Switzerland because I like all politics. <laughs> you know, I have yeah. opinions and I'm pretty conservative, but I'm more, you know, just leave my stuff alone and do your job. And then everybody's uh -huh. happy, but they can't do right. their job. They're, they're way too busy being political. Doesn't matter who you work for. But, um, you know, I think that this is just absolutely horrifying with the way that, you know, Mike de Blasio putting the people back in the nursing homes. You cannot tell me that that was not an intentional, let's take them out. You know, they had already known that old people were vulnerable. Exactly. And they had, you know, 
that ship sitting there. They had the Javits Center sitting there with nobody in there. And, you know, so they just decided to put them all back in the nursing homes. And Mm -hmm. so now you don't have so many people drawing Social Security and, you know, Medicaid and Medicare. So it's just the optics are so bad. If that was well, not intentional. only that, but uh, not, not only that, but I, I know I understand that you are you are a conservative, correct? Um, I just want them to, you know, if you're going to take my taxes, do something good for everybody with it, and leave me alone to do what I want to do. But I guess you've noticed that most of the people who are dying are Democrats. Have you noticed that? I I had not paid attention to party affiliations because well. Well, most of them are either Native American, Black, uh, or other minorities, and probably that they, they would be voting Democratic. Well, I knew it so, was sweeping through the the tribal areas, like the Black tribal or... areas, the Hispanics, the Blacks, the Browns. Those are the people who are dying. Yeah, not the white, not so many white people are dying, and the people, the white people who are dying. Um, may be Republican, but more likely they also are Democratic. Well, so for some reason, the Democrats are dying. That's what's going on here. So you have to ask the question, how did that happen? Well, why would that happen? Why would that happen? I mean, that's because illogical most, if you go most, by a, you know. I mean, it's crazy. They're the, ones, they're the ones that are more vulnerable to being sick. Well, somebody in chat said, well, the poor can't afford to wear masks. And that's not true because they're $10 for a box of 100 at Walmart and the health departments will give them to you. That's I mean, right. That's, that's, that's absolutely no excuse. It's not a socioeconomic thing. But exactly. It, but I think it is a socio something thing. I, I honestly, I had not been aware that that was primarily Democrats, I thought it was just taking everyone. Well, you know that the minorities are, tend to be Democratic. You're aware of that, right? Well, I would say so. And of uh, most of the, 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 the most of the minority people, a lot of them don't, can't afford to stay healthy. They don't have the money to stay healthy. It well, no, they don't, because the, the food that they get is not designed for that. Exactly. So that's the way it's working out. If they're using WIC and stuff, it is not designed for that. One way or another, that's the way it's working out politically. And uh, I would say that's in Trump's favor. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. It would be very hard for me to say how that could happen. But uh, it definitely is happening. And you, you must agree with me. You must agree with me that it is happening. Well, that, I I will take your word for it. I have not researched that, and I really wasn't aware of that. But we have to take our our final break here. And um, but thank you. That was something I did not know. I love learning new things. I wish it wasn't a tragic thing. But um, we will be back. This is our final break which means that if you have a question, you need to get it in chat. And we'll be right back. You know, I can't believe... um... You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Come on, I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHN Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. 
Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to the final segment of Fate Mag Radio, and you know what? Thank you so much for staying up with us because we got a little bit of a late start today. Technology at its finest. I am I am just thrilled. This has to me been one of the best conversations ever with Lynn Caston. And Lynn, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Yeah. So we have um I wanna ask a question because um <laughs> Brian said I missed the first hour or maybe two you missed one because we had some technical issues so um, yeah we've got there's so many things so many things but he was like okay well you know, we want to get back to alien stuff he says do you think that there will be a false flag with an alien invasion of course they're already here and at that point, will the aliens step in? I'm assuming he means to write all that is wrong with our world. He means our alien friends, I assume. I hope. <laughs> Not the reptilians. Not the reptilians, because they're here and they're feisty. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know, but if they want to, if they're going to reduce the population by seven, by six billion. It would have to be something very, very radical. That could only be a war of some type. Uh, it's not likely that disease would, a disease would accomplish that end, of killing six billion people. Uh, but on the other hand, a nuclear war certainly would. And uh, it may be a combination. I don't know. I do know that the robots are getting ready to take over. I can tell you that. They're becoming very sophisticated. The cyborgs and the robots will take over. Well, the we'll cyborgs are scary. Cyborgs are scary. Yes, they are. Part and, human, part machine. You know, when I sit there and I watch these robots that they're building, as they become apparently more cognizant, right, self-aware, doing whatever, and I'm going, right. who thinks this is a good idea? <laughs> We've all seen movies about this. We know what happens, and we're still doing it. Well, how many people have watched Battlestar Galactica from the early days? Uh, I think in the 70s is when it started, mm -hmm. where the uh, the, the Cylons took over 10, 10 star systems, if you recall. Yeah. And they were, all, they were all robots. They were all robots. So it's definitely been in our, in our science fiction for quite a long time. Well, and a lot of science fiction becomes science fact. Yes, it does. Yes, it does indeed. So, and that's because that's, all we, because that's all we've got to go on is science fiction. They won't let us have the facts. <laughs> that's true. And it's just very, very cold. But I guess that's why they're reptilians. But um, exactly. before we go a minute further... Why don't you go ahead and take this mo this time to tell people how to find you? Because I don't want to run out of time. Okay, you mean my website? Your Help website, me? any anything that you have coming up, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, I've written many, many articles for Atlantis Rising Magazine. I've written over 60 articles for Atlantis Rising Magazine over the years. So 
if you can get back copies of Atlantis Rising, uh, you'll see a lot of my articles there. And all of my books are available on Amazon, uh, so they're easy to get. They're all published by Inner Traditions, uh, same publisher. And uh, so that's that's where you start with that. And then my website is uh, alien dash secret history. It's still under construction, but there's still plenty. To, but there's a lot out there already. So uh, there's seven or eight videos that I would highly recommend watching. And uh, I'm working. I'm still working on it. Well, I think it's brilliant, and the videos are fantastic. The um, the the main featured is is terrific. You've got the the others. There's what five more, six more. Uh, six, six more, six more. And yeah. you know, I I just think it's terrific. So, and his books are also available on Amazon. But he has great publicists at Inner Traditions, so support them. Um, we have we have um, Brian said Atlantis, yeah, and that is actually an um, it's in the Atlantic. He said, "Is it in Africa? Is it what, off the Atlantis? African coast? The continent of Atlantis." Mm-hmm. Is that the question? Yes. The continent of Atlantis was in the Atlantic Ocean between uh, the east coast of the United States and Africa, yeah. and uh, most of it sank. Most of it sank beneath the waves around uh, thirty thousand years ago. Yeah, he was Main just late to the show. Oh, okay. So that's why he didn't know, and because um, we did address that a little earlier. And definitely you need to look him up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, this, the writing is great. The conversation is great, too, if you get a chance to come across him speaking. And I've, I'm just having so much fun. Let's see. I wanted to look. Um, you know, we've, we've alluded to, but we haven't actually mentioned it by name, the 20 and back program. And that's what okay. I heard Corey discussing when I heard him at Contact in the Desert. It will it's take kind of a fan- It's kind of a, fan- it's a fantastic concept, but so many super soldiers have already spoken about it. They can't, they can't all be making it up. So I'm sure it, it did exist, and it makes sense that it would exist because the, uh, the, the Nazi scientists have the ability to regress you back 20 years after you've completed your 20-year contract. They sign you up for 20 years, during which time you age naturally over that 20-year period. And then when, when your contract ends at the end of the 20 years, as a soldier or a scientist or whatever they use you for, then you are immediately reverted back to your original body, the original physical body that you had when you left. And all of your memory of the last 20 years is wiped completely out. So the only part of you that remembers it is your subconscious. And then you find yourself having talents and abilities you never understood or how you got them. You can't put it on your resume, but you have the abilities. Uh, Ileana Kopolnik was a woman that was taken for 50 years. Oh, wow. When she came, and when she came back, she was a teenager again. But she had this strange ability to a uh, sharpshooter with a pistol and a rifle and an axe. And she has no idea. And she had no idea where she got it from. That's an example. <laughs> that, that's an example of what I'm talking about. Well, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. You know, I've been talking about that ever since I heard him. People just get so blown away when I bring it up. And I talk about it on the show a lot. And... You know, he really made an impression on me. I, I do not, I don't really know why, but it, it was just something that resonated and it just seemed like such a thing, you know, and, and I have come across naysayers and, 
They don't really have any better reason for not believing it than I do for believing it. <laughs> right. Well, because... just imagine. If, just, ima- just imagine if we had if we had that technology now. Yes. Just imagine if we had that ability in real life. What we could do with that? Mm-hmm. I mean, there wouldn't be any more sickness. There wouldn't be any more ill health. There wouldn't be any more uh, premature death of anything. Cancer would be gone. All of that would be gone. Well, then we would have They're to colonize. Gonna... Yes, exactly. And the way to reduce the population, if they want to reduce the population is we have to start colonizing other planets. We don't have to kill people. Well, just just yeah. just go with Elon Musk and go to Mars. I'm all about going to Mars. I hate that I'm too old. <laughs> I I Well, you seriously. could be you could be you could be made younger, you know. I know. I would pay good money for that. <laughs> 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 but seriously, the cosmetic industry that's, would be no more. That's right, exactly. Surgeons so would be starving be, on the side of the street. I mean, seriously. You could, be, you could be a teenager on Mars. I would be wide open <laughs> exploring all the things, all the artifacts that are there that we're not supposed to recognize, right? Exactly, so, exactly. People just think that we are so stupid. I mean, they just keep on trying to tell us that we're not seeing what we're seeing, that we don't know what we know. I just get frustrated with that sometimes. Well, well, that's part of their strategy. They want you I to know. think that. But when you do know, it's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, it, could be. It, it could be very annoying. I agree with you. Well, you know, it's like when I was trying to watch your videos, um, you know, my computer, which is, I have a wonderful computer, and I guarantee you tomorrow it will function properly. But stuff happens when I'm doing a, a topic that may be controversial. A lot of times things happen te- technically. What and happens exactly? It's so frustrating. It's like, I know there are so much more important people that are saying a lot worse what things exactly about happens? you. You know, go mess with them. <laughs> but, uh-huh. You know, I am I am just so very happy to finally get a chance to talk with you. I anticipated Hello. this with with a lot of high hopes that I wouldn't, you know, trip over my facts and stuff because I've researched these things myself for a couple of years now. And I know that you're right. Some of it freaks me out. I do not like the idea of reptilians hunting humans. But I guess it's no worse than humans hunting deer. But it's still, it just will blow your mind if you actually sit and ponder it we have someone in chat this is uh she's not sure she's going to sleep tonight after hearing all this but a definite fantastic show so i think i'm going to take that one and be happy with it (laughs) (laughs) yeah well is there anything else that you'd like to address we've got about two minutes left well i think it's all out there uh i'm continually adding to my website and um I'm putting all my articles for Atlantis Rising out there one at a time. And I won't have all 60 of them out there, but I'll have about 30 of them out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, more videos. And then prob- probably a blog as well. But right now it's uh, still under construction. I would love to but see you- that blog. I hope that gets up soon. But I will say yeah. that um, that's a fantastic website already. Did you like the uh, Beyond Earth video? I liked the Beyond Earth, yes. Good, okay. That was brilliant. I th- that was a find, yes, that was a real find. And uh, it's it's very applicable because we're all going to have to leave this planet eventually. There's no, there's no need for any further wars or diseases. We just have to leave the planet, that's all. Well, and you know, if you just took the ones that want to go, there's plenty of them. There's plenty I of would, people that want to get off. That want to get off this planet. 
Well, I want to get on others. It's not so much that I want to leave this one. It's just that I want to see the right. others. Exactly, exactly. And I'm an explorer at heart. Yes, I am too. So it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to get out there. And you know what? Maybe if enough of us old people want to go, they'll use the stuff. Exactly. They can age regress us back to 20, and we'll go out there and explore the solar system and the, and the, and the galaxy. I'm down so. with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, even though we're, we're late getting out. And this is just something, Lynn, that, that I do. But I like to remind my, my listeners that, Hey, no matter if you're listening to us live or by podcast, I know that that a lot of people probably didn't realize we were going to be this late, and that's okay. Tomorrow's a work day, I get it. But, um, you know, this is still something that we can alter. There's so much angst. You know, we saw with Richard's death that there's so much hatred. People are just getting their thrills by being ugly. And... I was ver I was having to backspace a lot when I was typing a reply to someone that asked me how that prayer was working out for me. And you know, because I was able to contain my big mouth, I know everyone else can too. You know, we can be the change that we that we want to see. You know, we can be the the men and women, we can be the the soul families we can you know be the friend that we would want to have and all you have to do is just manifest it just try to make your part of the world better even if it's your kitchen with your kids or you know if it's walking down the street with your mask trying to get some exercise or whatever just be the change and mm-hmm. you know there's a good man out there named Corey Smith who wrote a chain, a song called Be the Change. And he wrote it for a foundation in Africa. And I post it on my Facebook periodically. You can go and scroll through that. But it's possible and it matters. So thanks for being here. Lynn, thank you for being here and <laughs> being thank so you. patient and understanding you, and Kat. kind. I appreciate you. Thank you, Kat. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being had, as it were. Okay. And keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep, absolutely. I'm going to wrap that around and just be cozy in it. I'll, I'm going to take <laughs> okay. that one to the bank. I appreciate that. Okay, and okay. for everyone else, you know, Denise Pridemore is going to be live on um, Paranormal Pride tomorrow. And she's got a good show. You're going to love it. And then I am having Mark Anthony on with me on Paranormal Experienced on Wednesday. Shelly will be live with Ghost Talk Radio on Friday. And I do not know her topic yet. I should, but I don't. And... You know, we've just got stuff happening all over the place. So y'all take care of you and take care of others. It's okay to do that. We're all one big family. So thanks again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the love and support that y'all send. And we will catch you next time. Same cat time, same cat channel. Good night. Good night, cat. Thank you. Thank you.